All right, folks, we have made it to the Slovakian spa town of Sklene Teplice, surrounded by the gods of bathing and thermal goodness in every direction. Now here, you don't really buy a ticket to the bathhouse and spend three, four, five hours. You go to several different bathing complexes. We can see here the cave bath, the Jaskini Pani Kuper, the river flowing through, steam, minerals. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. Officially overwhelmed. I love the baths, I love the baths. And this place, this Sklene Teplice, has been admired for its thermal waters for many generations. There we can see Maria Therese, 3739. We're gonna start off in there and then go literally scintillate within the cave. Oh yes, and this is the thermal fountain to take the waters. We can see some patrons filling up their bottles just now. And this water is terrific for all sorts of different ailments. Oh, hey, good health, good health. Now, the Germans, they call this place Glashütte because in the past there were tons of glass factories in the surrounding hills. And Sklena, in the Slovak language, it means glass. The Hungarians adopted this to Skleno, Skleno für du, the glass bath. And Teplice, Sklene Teplice, a Teplice is a Slovak spa town. Well, we just went into the uh, Maria Therese bath, feeling great, feeling fit as a fiddle. And just before the cave bath, we're gonna take the waters. The Pramen Ludovic. Mm. They all. And this is really what the spa towns are all about. Taking the healing waters that heal all sorts of musculoskeletal, gastrointestinal, and all other ailments of the body. Natural cure. Ah. <laughs> oh, the cutest. Sklena Teplice, Sklena for the. Well, welcome to Shelmet's Banya. You can see there the old Tsipugyar, the old shoe factory. In Slovakia, it's known as. What is it again? Banska Stavianica. And it's an ancient mining town. This was one of the most prosperous towns in all of the medieval Hungarian kingdom. Famed the world over for its silver and its gold and its mineral wealth. And it's very well preserved. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And we are going to explore the cobblestone streets and see what we can find. No idea who this is, but he looks like he just came out of the mines. And there we can see some of the architectural flourishes that are sprinkled all over this town. And here is an entrance to one of the mines. Stona Glanzenberg. Check out the juxtaposition. The old and decaying, and the new and shiny. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bonska, bonska, oh, yeah. bonska. Ho, oh, ho. Blessed by sunlight. Look at this. Absolutely wonderful. Now they say that this was the third largest city during the Kingdom of Hungary days when the Ottomans were in the center of Hungary. Shelmetspanya, believe it or not, behind only Pozhoin, aka Bratislava, and Debrecen was the third largest city. Nowadays it's only about 10,000. They've had a population freefall of sorts over the past several centuries, but it maintains its place and its role as a truly heritage-packed city. Yes, Shelmetspanya. Stavianica Banska. Banska Stavianica. 
So that yellow building must be the gymnasium. And I think that this is the mining academy. The Royal Mining Academy, or at least it used to be. Oh, right on the money. The Academy. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 200 years. Mining Academy. Ooh, I knew it. Absolutely knew it. How many miners trained in this Academy? Countless. Countless scientists, engineers, and those who sunk into the ground. The architecture is simply unbelievable, otherworldly. Oh, beautiful town. I've very rarely been to such a magnificent town in my life. There's the main woman herself, Maria Therese. This beautiful mural, the mining history. You can imagine the atmosphere here, maybe seven, eight centuries ago. Guilds, miners, hmm. it would have been something to behold. Nowadays, We've got modern bistros. Happy life, happy wife. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> now this castle here behind me has had a church standing on this site since the 13th century. 13th century? That was back when Negidik Bela was in charge. And it was he who gave Shelmetsbanya privileges as an official town. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, this is every, everyone's dream, though. It's just my dream, I guess, but all right. Wow, well preserved, the old castle walls. <laughs> indeed, indeed, in. indeed. Little mining symbol and the beautiful vista unfurling below. Shelmet Spanya. Banska Stavianitsa. Glorious place. All right, ladies and gents. Well, we are back at what they call the homestead. Ooh. Ooh. This beautiful Airbnb. Shrouded in darkness in the middle of this pine forest. And here we are. We have a lineup of exquisite... Slovakian offerings to imbibe, but first we shall luxuriate within as if the bath wasn't enough. Now we have a wood fired sauna. What do you think? One more log? Oscar, I see you. I see you, Oscar. Uh huh. I see you. Nemros, Nemros. Again. It's my birthday. What a treat do we have here, right behind me in the village of Turova. Turova, known in Hungarian as Zoyom Tur. You know, Zoyom being Zvolen. The Zoyom Var, the famous hunting hunt of Louis the Great. And this is Turova, Woo! AKA Zoyom Tur. And we have this Vodapoda, Vodapoda. The Turova Vodapoda, not the biggest, of waterfalls by any means, but oh how charming in this gap, this cavern within the forest. Look at how this stream just carries along. So signature. -hoo -hoo. And one can't help but imagine the types of 15th centuries, smugglers notches and smugglers coves that existed amongst these woods. And perhaps during the later centuries, the 16th into the 17th, it may have operated as a hideaway, a refuge point against invading Turks. Who knows? Who knows? 
just about made it there. Positively tingling. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> okay, that is gonna be slightly problematic. That could have been much worse. I mean, all things considered, you know, these Merrells, they have great insulation. My feet are not even wet. Oh, that was a <laughs> close call. See you later. Well, this right here is an UNESCO World Heritage Site. The wooden churches of the Carpathians in Slovakia. This is one of eight wooden churches that are listed as UNESCO heritage. And they're very interesting because while this church in front of us in the town of Hronsek, I think I'm pronouncing that right, it's on the river Hron, a tributary of the Danube. And while this church is Protestant and there's two other Protestant churches, the so-called articular churches, there are also, I believe, is it three? Greek Orthodox and two Roman Catholic. And that is why UNESCO has taken such an interest in these churches because they have this super signature, traditional, unique style being wooden. Quite rare for a church, one would say. And yet they spread across the faiths of this richly cultural part of Central Europe. Now, something I've just learned about this church, it's called an articulated wooden church uh, as are the other Protestant wooden churches, because they are built according to the laws which were articulated at the Congress of Chopron. The Hungarian town of Chopron, the Protestants had a Congress there, and they articulated these laws. And one of the laws is that these wooden churches aren't allowed to have any iron at all in the framework. So that is why you can see even on these joints and these appendages, you'll notice What's a good example right here? You'll notice they use wooden wooden uh, pins basically. And that's just crazy. I mean, this whole thing is made completely from wood. You know, they say wooden church. You don't really know what it means. Oh, look at the mighty Kron. It's flowing so fast, but it's really all wood, all wood. And you can see up there, it looks like the hull of a ship. And they say that there were many uh, persecuted Protestants from this region that ended up seeking work in shipbuilding yards in Scandinavia. So we see a lot of incorporation of Scandinavian architectural elements. Yep, it's wood. Day moon. Whoa, fighter of the night moon. That's not how the song goes. What a town, look at their sigil, their stimere. It's literally a raft. We now approach the ruined remains of the Shashovsky Rad. The Shashovsky Castle. Ho, ho, ho. Magnificent old pile. And the views out into the distance. Ho, 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 ho. Yes, indeed. There's the River Kron. Now, they say that this place is called Shashovsky, actually from the Hungarian word Shash, which means eagle. And this castle was built in the 13th century atop of the Eagle's Rock. It is said to be known colloquially as the Clown's Castle or the Jester's Castle. During the Renaissance era, it was given as a thank you gift from a lord to his court fool for having saved his life. Yes, the court jester. A very important role in the royal retinue, often overlooked. But there are no jokes being told today. I mean, whew, eviscerated. I think it's been fairly damaged since at least the beginning of the 18th century. We're talking during the times of the Rakotsi Rebellion. Many centuries, in fact, at some point or another, it was used as the base of operations for the notorious Dotsi family, who were said to be local robber barons. Oh. As we look overhead atop these pine trees at the smoke billowing in the village below, 
and we meander through this magnificent history. Cho de lato stutanellum. Nature, adventure, history, and wonder. We really can have it all, can't we? The Clown's Castle, Eagle Rock, Shoshovskorad. <laughs> the most private and splendid little getaway. And now I am 32 years old. Harman's Kate Heveshvajok. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. But I still feel like I'm 12. <laughs> and now we take a look inside the property. Two beds on the first floor, enough to sleep four. And then we got extra space upstairs. Beautiful kitchen, campfire stove, and also the option to cook. Ooh, it's still hot. On top of the wood fired oven. Oh, it's great. It's wonderful, wonderful. What a rustic, rustic adventure. Love this picture. Tushy. And then we got upstairs this little loft and this gives you enough room oh, for at least, at least three more guests, at least three more guests. So this place, I don't know what it says on Airbnb, but it comfortably, comfortably fits at least seven. So there you go. Enjoy, have some fun. And uh, yeah, don't say I never gave you anything, folks. Don't say I never gave you anything. And if you come here, please let me know. It was a very special 32nd birthday. One I shan't forget soon. Oh, ho, ho, did we have a good time in the sauna. <laughs> all right, one more trip to the outhouse. And that's all she wrote.